Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rahim. In this video, we are going to talk about vasomotor rhinitis. Vasomotor rhinitis is a non allergic rhinitis, but clinically simulated allergic rhinitis with symptoms of nasal obstruction, rhinorrhea, and sneezing. It is a condition in which blood vessels inside the nose dilate, causing nasal congestion and increase mucus drainage. The symptoms of vasomotor rhinitis may be intermittent or constant persisting throughout the year and all the tests of nasal allergy are negative. Now the question arises that what causes vasomotor rhinitis? The exact cause is not known and therefore it is also called idiopathic rhinitis. But there are certain factors which may trigger an inflammatory reaction including smoke, strong odors and environmental irritants like smoke, weather changes particularly dry weather, changes in temperature and barometric pressure, certain medications like aspirin, ibuprofen or beta blockers, strong emotions and hot and spicy food and beverages. Let's talk about the pathogenesis of vasomotor rhinitis. Basically, autonomic nervous system is unstable in cases of vasomotor rhinitis. As we know that sympathetic stimulation causes vasoconstriction and shrinkage of mucosa and parasympathetic stimulation causes vasodilation and engorgement of blood vessels. So in vasomotor rhinitis, there is overactivity of a parasympathetic nervous system leading to excessive secretions and nasal discharge. Autonomic nervous system is under the control of hypothalamus, so emotions play a great role in vasomotor rhinitis. The patient will be having the following symptoms paroxysmal sneezing bouts of sneezing start just after getting out of the bed in the morning then excessive rhinorrhea which is profuse and watery and may even wet several handkerchiefs the nose may drip when the patient leans forward and this may need to be differentiated from csf rhinorrhea then a nasal obstruction this alternates from side to side usually more marked at night. It is the dependent side of the nose which is often blocked when lying on one side. Then post nasal drip. On examination of the nasal mucosa, mucosa over the turbinates is congested and hypertrophic while in some patients it may be normal. Long standing cases of vasomotor rhinitis develop complications which may be similar to the complications of allergic rhinitis and include chronic sinusitis, nasal polypi, hypertrophic rhinitis, ear infection, decreased sense of smell, obstructive sleep apnea and in some patients asthma. Vasomotor rhinitis is diagnosed clinically depending on history and clinical examination of the nose like nasal endoscopy is done. No special investigation is required except for the allergic skin tests and blood tests to assess the immune system. Vasomotor rhinitis is basically a diagnosis of exclusion. When a doctor finds no other cause of the symptoms, then he diagnoses the patient with vasomotor rhinitis. Let's talk about the treatment options available for the vasomotor rhinitis. Two types of treatment options are available, medical and surgical. In medical treatment, we can give the antihistamines like sterizine, loratadine, phenyramine, etc. Nasal decongestants like oxymetazoline and xylometazoline can be given to relieve nasal obstruction, sneezing and rhinorrhea. Topical steroids like Baclomethasone, dipropionate, budesonide or fluticasone, they are used as sprays or aerosols and are useful to control the symptoms. Systemic steroids can be given for a short period of time in very severe cases 
and psychological factors should be removed and some patients may need tranquilizers to treat the condition. In surgical, we have two treatment options. Number one is the reduction of turbinates to relieve the nasal obstruction and number two is the VDN neurectomy. There are several methods for the reduction of turbinates. You can check these methods from my video on the topic of chronic hypertrophic rhinitis. Other associated causes of nasal obstruction, for example, polyps, deviated nasal septum should also be corrected. Then excessive rhinorrhea, which is not corrected by medical therapy and bothersome to the patient, can be relieved by sectioning the parasympathetic secretomotor fibers to the nose, which is uh, basically the nerve of pterygoid canal, also known as Vidian nerve. So the procedure is known as Vidian neurectomy. Then how to prevent vasomotor rhinitis? By the avoidance of physical factors like sudden change in temperature, humidity, blasts of air or dust. For example, by maintaining the constant temperatures in the house by using the humidifiers and other methods. And with exercise or increased physical activity as there is sympathetic stimulation with exercise or increased physical activity and helps in preventing vasomotor rhinitis. Then the difference between allergic rhinitis and vasomotor rhinitis. In vasomotor rhinitis, there is no itching in the nose, itchy or watery eyes or scratchy throat as in the patients of allergic rhinitis. All allergy tests are negative in vasomotor rhinitis while positive in patients having allergic rhinitis. There is no seasonal variations in the patient of vasomotor rhinitis. Either the symptoms are intermittent or constant persisting throughout the year. While the patient with allergy may be having seasonal or perennial variations. That's all about today's video of vasomotor rhinitis. I hope you liked the video. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel for more updates, share it with your friends and thanks for watching.